Kathy and Martina from Mevia.com. How are you? We're good. How are you? Good. I was just watching your eco-friendly girl talk. Oh, good. <laughs> You're from Berkeley, right? Uh, originally, I was born there, yeah. We're from, we're from San Francisco, so Bay Area girls. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Bay Area represent. You're the third person <laughs> I've met today who's uh, from the Bay Area. Oh, cool. That's awesome. A lot of people coming up from there. Yep. Don't shoot it down. En Vogue, MC Hammer. How did you guys come up with the name Morningwood? Um, it was quite a while ago. It was our first uh, phone conversation Pedro and I had after we met. And Pedro called me, and I was incredibly hungover, and uh, asked to help me come up with a name for his musical project that he was working on. And we spent a couple hours on the phone, and the end result was Morningwood, and it was before we ever made any music together. That's awesome. Speaking of Pedro, he used to be in the Wallflowers, right? So how did he make that transition from that band to yours? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, you would have to ask him. Oh, wow. Uh, he's, he's not here, though, but uh, he did it, uh, I guess, pretty seamlessly. <laughs> well, I mean, there was good. a while in between that, but uh, I think he wanted to get out from behind the drums and play another Thank instrument. Thanks. Right. So um, your song best of me is the theme song for daisy of love on vh1 what do you think of daisy have you met her before or anything i have she was uh actually very sweet uh and and actually like really cute in in real life and uh that is much to my surprise <laughs> the type of girl that i i find attractive but she's she's quite adorable <laughs> and incredibly incredibly good natured that's good so um what like how did you guys get that um well they heard the song i guess you know we sort of struck up a relationship with vh1 and they were always really supportive of us and they they were really interested in all the music we were making and we sent them uh best of me and they loved it and they thought it would um make a great addition to um one of their shows and they just really like the music that we make which is awesome for us well congratulations with that and also nth degree is on the mercury commercials yeah that was a while ago, but yes, it was. Mm -hmm. That paid my uh, that paid my uh, rent for a little while. So that nice. was lovely. That's I'm always, always good. very um, I'm very honored when people hear our music with a brand or something that they're selling to me because it's so it's such a huge decision to put something like that. And if, if somebody's working so hard and has their job on the line and invested, and they actually believe that our music can help, you know, help people believe in their product, then that's a huge compliment to me, to be honest. And, and I, I find nothing wrong with it. The only time I really have to, like, sort of check myself and be like, oh, is this sort of, like, artistically viable or whatever, which I think is bullshit anyways because I have to pay my fucking rent. So you not only have your music on commercials with products, but your song New York Girls was also on in the Sex and the City movie. Which is awesome. Yeah. That's a really yeah, big no. thing too. It was right. Like, that, that was the best part of the movie, and I'm not just saying that because <laughs> my um, son was there. But it, that's what you wanted to see them do. You wanted to see them at fashion shows, being fabulous and whatever. I mean, I was a huge fan of the show. The movie was, um, you know, different. But uh, <laughs> I was really happy to be a part of it. Then. Yeah, that's so exciting. Especially you know, us girls, we all love Sex in the City, so that must have been awesome for you. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, I absolutely flipped my shit for that show. I would watch it every week. So we heard that when you perform your song, Take Off Your Clothes, people start stripping. It has definitely been known to happen, for sure. <laughs> so but, uh, how did that come about? Like, how did that start? Uh, originally, I wrote the song for my ex-boyfriend, and I used to sort of have him come up and sort of, like, go up to him and sort of, you know, molest him while I was <laughs> doing the song. And then, you know, people started to jump in front of him. And before I could get to him, there would be other people sort of, like, nudging in between us and, and you know, having me sort of molest them instead. So <laughs> and, was, and that was, you know, a really long time ago. So now it's just become the standard. People know that when we're playing that song, I'm definitely going to have an audience volunteer and that they have a good chance of doing it. And there's a lot of 
exhibitionists in the world who love to get on stage and take off their clothes. Do they really strip all the way, like totally naked or like bra and There have been, there have definitely been people that have stripped all the way totally naked. There are people who don't. I mean, <laughs> I get upset. I mean, the song is very clearly called Take Off Your Clothes. I do, I get angry because to me at the end of the day, it's a show. You don't have to get completely naked at yeah. all. In fact, I, I don't endorse getting fully <laughs> naked because a lot of clubs you'll get kicked out right after yeah. and I just think that's such a that's such a cruel way to go be like get up on stage later like you're kicked out so I, I think there's there's a subtlety which is totally accepted you know bras and underwear are are just as sexy and you know leaves a little bit to the imagination right. so but my biggest uh the thing the way to piss me off most is when you try and try and try and get on stage and then bring you up on stage and then you refuse to take anything off that is the quickest way to make me angry do you strip when you do the song <laughs> i do not ever no. i have never ever done it uh i do not it's a common misnomer people think i do but i I'm quite modest, and uh, I do not pick Keep up my clothes. Although, All right. if you get me drunk, my pants come off in two seconds, and I start dancing. <laughs> Anything but swimming, and I'm, I'm naked. You can get me drunk, but I don't drink before when I play. So, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So you have an yeah. album coming out called Diamonds and Studs, which is a really cool title, by the way. So, can you thank tell, you. Can you tell us a little bit about like the genre, or if it's different from the first one, and everything? Um, the genre. I, the genre is pretty eclectic, I would say, and, and this is just for lack of a better term, it's like pop rock, which I just don't feel adequately describes our music anyways. I'm, that's probably my hardest question to answer is like, what is your music sound like? I'm like, oh, oh, painful question. I have no idea. Um, but the in terms of the difference between the first album and this one, this is definitely, and I find it so cliche when, when musicians say this, but it's totally the truth and I really haven't found a better way to phrase it is it's a definite growth from our first record and like an evolution where we're just really we were not afraid to sort of look into all of our influences because we're very very eclectic people Pedro and I especially musically you know I like 90s hip-hop I like you know classical music I like I like R&B I like rock I like pop I like all of that and I I felt like the first record, we didn't get to explore all of those things. And this one, we really consciously tried to delve into our different influences, which we did. So you'll get like, you know, you'll get like hip hop drum beats and you'll get some taiko drums. You'll get like Bart's Fuss fame, sound music. It feels like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I'm really excited about that. Well, we wish you all the success with your new album. When is Thank it coming out? Thank you very much. What's the date it's coming out? Uh, October 27th. All right. You're right before Halloween. <laughs> right before Halloween. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> well, you um, you were compared to Debbie Harry and Shirley Manson, who are some really big names in the music industry. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's an honor, but in the same regard, I think it's people's lack of imagination. I would, you know, <laughs> I would love to be like Shirley Manson or Debbie Harry. Do I really think I am like those people not necessarily I think we have similarities but I think just because we have you know vaginas people are like <laughs> girl in rock you know girl yeah. fronting a band with three people in men in them it's obviously this you know I think it's not necessarily true it's for lack of a better word you know we're women Woo! <laughs> so if you could collaborate with any artist in the whole world dead or alive who would it be Ooh, thank you for saying dead or alive, because everyone I love is dead, so uh, <laughs> uh, I really appreciate that. I would have to say um, Nina Simone, or uh, Lux Interior from The Cramps. I love me some Elvis. He didn't just die, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> spirit. That would be, that that would be cool. I, I could picture Morningwood and Elvis doing a collab. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even letting the band come with me on this one. It's just going to be me and Elvis. <laughs> How about somebody alive that you could collaborate with? Beyonce, I love her. Oh, nice. That would be fun. <laughs> All the single ladies. That would be amazing. <laughs> I did actually do a cover of... Uh, Bingo ladies, but I changed it to bingo ladies. All the bingo ladies. All the bingo ladies. <laughs> so, um, who is your celebrity crush? Um, my husband. Alrighty, thank you so much, Chantal. We really appreciate it, and good luck on thank the new you. album. Thank you very much. Have a great day.